Hello Nikhil, welcome to Sweden and welcome to the fourth edition of the Data Innovation Summit here in Stockholm. It's nice to have you with us. To begin with, please tell us more about yourself, your background, the company you are coming from. Yeah, uh, so I first began working at Amazon mm -hmm. doing distributed systems. Mm -hmm. I worked at Walmart applying mm -hmm. natural language processing to mm -hmm. clean data so that the item page you see mm -hmm. is of the highest quality. Mm -hmm. And then I worked at Facebook. At Facebook, I was working on a real-time stream processing system. Right? And then I moved to Airbnb to work on the machine learning platform. So my background is basically a mix of a lot of distributed systems and machine learning. Great. So um, as, as you said, machine learning. So Airbnb's biggest weapon is machine learning. And today uh, you present it on the technical machine learning, deep learning uh, stage about big hats, the uh, machine learning framework that uh, you guys are implementing. So how can these machine learning algorithms be used to model and to predict human buying behavior in this case when it comes to Airbnb? So that the buying behavior is a multi-dimensional problem. Mm -hmm. So the first side is how to surface the right listings so that users can book. And the second mm -hmm. thing is how to automatically set the price at, of each of these listings. Mm -hmm. And the third thing there, the most important thing in my opinion, is how do you model user in a space? Right? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you compare so that all the listings and all the searches that you give to him are relevant? Mm -hmm. So, um, Airbnb uses the artificial intelligence, you know, the most hyped thing lately yeah. and the main theme or, or focus of this conference as well, to get more people to get more bookings more quickly. But when it comes to AI, one of the big focuses is on how to prevent the bias from teaching machine learning algorithms. Your comments on this, please, as, a, as an expert on the field. Yeah. So, this hasn't been a problem until six years ago because the models were simpler. Yeah. So <laughs> there are linear models, there are decision trees. You could open them up and see what's going on pretty much. A decision tree is like an algorithm. So if you open it up, it says, okay, if the height of the person is so-and-so, if something is so-and-so, it's very explicit, mm -hmm. right? And it follows the tree down until a node, which is the answer that you're going to fill. Mm -hmm. But neural networks are a bit more complex. There are just numbers everywhere. It's not uh, as interpretable as the new models or the older models, mm -hmm. right? And that brings with it the challenges of interpretability. There is a lot of work that is being done to open up a model, a neural network, and understand what those activations mean. Mm -hmm. right? And it's really important that we continue along that path so that we can really understand when a model takes a decision, what is the reasoning behind it. Mm -hmm. So, um, to, back to the AI and ML stuff. Today's hype about AI is both good as well as bad. On one hand, it's easier than ever to talk about deploying solutions inside the company. On the other hand, some people's expectation to what actually the machine learning uh, platforms can do in practice can far exceed what is actually possible to do with it. So what are some of the challenges when it comes to implementing machine learning, um, in this case, from your industry, your perspective company? I think it's a mo it's mostly a communication problem mm -hmm. right there is some technical uh, depth to the machine learning problem there are several kinds of machine learning right there is supervised learning where you need mm -hmm. to feed the model a mm -hmm. bunch of data which is already labeled right mm -hmm. and this is the most thoroughly solved problem and this was the case until like 2012 mm -hmm. like all structured data was easy to understand for a model and clear mm -hmm. predictions with around 2012 what happened was Models got better with images, video mm -hmm. and audio, like all the freeform data was mm -hmm. more interpretable and accessible to the models. So suddenly you unlock this new wave of applications because of these new algorithms, mm -hmm. right? That, but that is still supervised learning, mm -hmm. right? When people think about AI, right? When an ordinary person thinks about AI, what he thinks about is like a robot that can yeah. <laughs> think for itself and take actions, right? But that is called generalized AI and there are so many steps in between. Mm -hmm. There is reinforcement learning, which is what is currently the hot or the yeah, it is really most important topic. It's really one of the trends. Uh, that's yeah, amazing. definitely. Mm. And if you, uh, so one of the reinforcement, reinforcement learning success stories is AlphaZero, mm -hmm. the Go algorithm that beat uh, 
mm-hmm. the go grandmaster it just learned without any data input just played with itself and figured out how to play the game right this is the first step towards uh, having a comprehensive reinforcement learning story but that is still many layers away from mm-hmm. having a generalized ai so when people speak of ai it's important to understand what is the domain of the problem is it supervised learning is it semi supervised or is it reinforcement learning or are you talking about generalized ai if you can break your problem down into these domains you can say if it's possible to solve this problem given current yeah. techniques that will be easier for them and for us as well <laughs> okay according to forbes um, ai and machine learning are the key technology trends of this year but uh, you mentioned very well the evolution of machine learning like you quite well mentioned the steps and the importance but what is its future what can we expect in the near future everything is changing on a monthly basis <laughs> <laughs> i think we can expect the supervised learning part mm. to become easy so this was accessible in production for a very few select companies mm-hmm. back in the day and the technology or the platforms that are enabling these things to be applied at a rapid pace are just coming into the open source ecosystem right now mm-hmm. so it will enable all the companies ranging from a single data scientist and a small company with two or three people to large organizations to scale machine learning within their companies so scalability is still uh... Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're still at the stage where we are making supervised learning more rigorous and applicable. So this you can uh, compare it to the days before there was databases, right? Everybody used to hire their own engineering team to implement like some kind of a data indexing system so that they can store data and use the data. So Airbnb is easing our access. <laughs> yeah. Great. We're trying to make it easy. Yeah, um, Nikhil, thank you very much. Thank you very much for being a speaker at uh, the, this year's edition, and thank you for conducting this interview with us. Thank you, Sarana. Thank you for the invitation.